So we finished the uh, previous video talking about the importance in using the um, R project uh, files as a way of kind of organizing your project um, on your computer, uh, using a sensible folder structure to keep your you know, raw data, your tidy data, your various uh, data wrangling and analysis scripts in a sensible place. We're going to build on that uh, in this little video where I talk to you about uh, some of the good habits that you can start using early on, which are very much focused on basically adopting a good coding style. So ultimately, in R, uh, you're going to be writing scripts. So scripts are simply uh, lists of commands that are executed, typically one after each other. And when you're writing these scripts in R, uh, they're really important because they will allow both yourself and others to recreate your entire analysis just, just from running those scripts. And it's really important that you've got a script at data wrangling, data tidying, visualization, etc. Because uh, it may uh, happen that uh, you know you kind of do all of your analysis, everything else, realize you forgot to include a couple of participants. Um, it's actually really easy then to just rerun your entire set of scripts on you know not including these new participants. Uh, just by sort of uh, kind of running all those uh, data wrangling, visualization, and R scripts that you will have already written. Now it's important when you're writing um, these kind of scripts that you um, write them in a very sort of clear and consistent manner. Uh, you want them to be human readable as well as uh, computer readable. Um, from my point of view, a pretty good template to use when you're writing your script is to have the code at the start of your script that loads your packages, you know, tidyverse, the various statistical packages you'll be using. You'll have some white space after that. Then you'll have code for reading in your data. You'll have white space after that. Then you'll have your code associated with tidying, transforming your data. You might have then a separate chunk of code associated with building all of your graphs. And then you might have another chunk of code at the end to do with your statistical modeling. So you could write it all in one big script like that, or if you wanted to, you could actually write different scripts for each of these different stages. You know, kind of whatever, whatever you think is kind of best for the, for the project that you're working on. So I mentioned that it's important that your scripts are as human readable as they are machine readable. To make them human readable, you can include white space in that way, but you can do a lot more as well. You can include comments. So a comment uh, is something that your computer will ignore, but makes sense to you, hopefully. You've written the comment. Uh, so you can preface a comment with a little um, hash symbol. Um, and comments are important, not just for others when they're looking at your code, but they're actually really important for you in the future. When you come back and look at the analysis script, you maybe wrote, I don't know, three, four months earlier, you'll be surprised at how much you forgot about kind of what you were doing at the time. So providing comments really helps you understand what you've written uh, when, you know, future you is looking, work that work, looking at work the past you actually created. So as well as kind of thinking about uh, your kind of script, having lots of comments, having lots of white space, you also want to make sure that the various files you're creating, the various uh, scripts you're creating, also have meaningful labels too. So here's a couple of examples. Regression underscore model dot R is a pretty good, uh, you know, indication as to what is in that R script. Whereas my model final version three dot R is a pretty pretty rubbish description. Uh, variable names should be meaningful, and from my point of view, I think it always makes things more readable for them to be in lower case. So if you've got you know, uh, information about participants in a particular study, you might have recorded their age. So just having a variable called age, all in uh, lowercase, is obviously meaningful. Uh, variable titles such as A1 are bad, they don't tell you anything. Um, if you've got a data file that you want to map onto a variable, well, experiment1 underscore raw underscore data is a pretty good name for that, because it tells you exactly what it is. Or something like experiment one data without out, without outliers removed with no white space with obviously no underscores or anything is a pretty bad name, um, and you'll also get really annoyed if you have to keep typing that out 
uh, again and again and I've just realised I've actually got a typo in it too so again you want to be avoiding uh, typos as well in your uh, in your variable names. So we talked a little bit about how you can use white space in your scripts in terms of like blank lines between chunks of code. You can also use white space around operators such as plus, minus, equal, assignment or this operator which we'll come on to in a little bit called the pipe um, just to make it more readable. So always think about human readability as well as machine readability. So white space use sensibly can make things a lot easier to read. When you're writing scripts, uh, don't have really long lines of code. Um, try to stick to code that doesn't extend beyond 80 characters. And what you can do using our Studio Desktop, this is one of the things you configure, is you can actually ask for a little margin to be presented in your scripting window at the 80 character limit. And when you get up to that, you simply press return and continue your code on the next line. And that will actually all be interpreted as one line of code. So it's a really good idea to make sure that, you know, when you're reading your code, you're not having to scroll your window left and right to read uh, one line of code. Just press return, continue it on the next line. Um, can't say enough, can't emphasize enough, comment, comment, comment. So here's a, a comment that we might have. We've got the hash symbol, first we load our data file. So that's maybe a comment we'd have at the start of the um, chunk of code that reads in our data. So think about adding these comments as you go along. Get into these sorts of habits early, because if you get into these habits early, you won't have to relearn or unlearn bad habits later on as you become more pr proficient using R and R Studio. So ultimately, you're gonna be wanting to share your code. You might want to be um, publishing it, uh, uploading it to somewhere like GitHub giving it a DOI uh, via somewhere like Zenodo. You might be submitting your analysis code, your data, alongside your journal submission. Many journals now actually require, alongside your journal article, your data and your analysis code. Um, and my view is that even when journals don't explicitly ask you to submit your data and code, it's actually good practice to do so anyway. So I always make my data and code available to journal reviewers when I'm submitting my research article. And certainly you should be making your data and code publicly available once your paper is published. So thinking about your journal articles, your article plus your analysis code plus your data is kind of a good way of thinking about the sort of open research uh, bar that you should, be, you should be aiming for. Now it's really important when you make your code and data available that you make it clear to other people how they can use and reuse it. Um, so provide a license. So add a license, um, an open source license, uh, which will tell people how they can use and reuse your code. I tend to go for CC BY and the MIT licenses. These are fairly permissive licenses. Um, you might have restrictions that you might want to sort of uh, sort of put on your how your code and data are reused, or you might want to be uh, as open as possible with them. Uh, so you can just go to the website, choose the license.com, and it will actually give you advice as to what license you should put on your data and code. Uh, but you have to re realize, you know, research over the last five years has changed dramatically. Open research practices are now recognized in, you know, ex exercises like the REF. Many uh, job advertisements now require sort of applicants to have experienced using these open and reproducible methods. And actually, if you aren't sharing your data and code, you actually aren't generating open and reproducible research. So I just want to finish this little video uh, by advising you to go and have a look at the Tidyverse style guide. This is the guide written by Hadley Wickham, which gives you lots of great advice about how to basically style your R scripts so that they're consistent and they're as human readable as they are machine readable. Mm -hmm.